Welcome, everyone. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on June 20th, 2018. I'm Tricia Gordon at the University of Virginia, and I'm facilitating the call today, and welcome all of you. Uh, I see a bunch of people are already on the call, so that's great. Um, we're going to start off with some updates and announcements. And Laura Geckler is working on, or has just shared a URL. So if you want to click on that, you can. And otherwise, um, I am going to attempt to share that. Okay. Laura just, somebody just gave me back presenter rights. I don't know if I did that for myself or what. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try to share them. You want me to start with the first one there, Laura? Sure. This wow. Can... What? I get to be first on the agenda. Who knew? Well, sure, why not? Let me get a, <laughs> get a share going. So while Tricia is doing that, I'll just uh, go ahead and, and let you know what, what we're working on. So a group of us long, long site clients um, have been meeting and trying to decide where we could best contribute to the community and ourselves, of course. So, um, you know, we had some high priority stuff. We went through JIRAs, we, we did this or that. And um, pretty much we came up with two things. Uh, one is the new grade book and the other one is a process that would give us consistent results uh, across all the ways that you can create sites. So there's four of them. And um, we wrote up, we wrote up a, a project um, scope document, like we're being official. So the first link is to the charter. And um, then our little group decided to um, try and write requirements one by one by one. And then this is the capstone. The third URL I posted is from Christina Schweibert. So if you want to focus on that one, it really tells you what we're trying to do here with SIS course creation or um, import from site or duplicate or institutions that have instructors create their own sites, um, you know, using either a template or this process to get content from other sites. So if you're looking at Christina's flowchart, you see that no matter which one of these methods you are to use, you get asked a question to copy this content to another site so push it out or to copy content into this site to pull it in. And once you make that choice, um, you see, let's see, pull it into this site goes off to um, select the source sites. Well, we also wanted to do a one-to-one -one if you say replace, but if you say merge, we allow you to check multiple sites from which you want to pull content at the same time. And then the, um, and then the, and this was all very, you know, very beginning level. Like we haven't been talking about this more than two months, but we're very excited about it. And Josh Wilson from Longsite has been facilitating the logistics of it, scheduling meetings for us and whatnot. But anyway, when you get to the select tools, you get to actually expand the tool if you want to and select, you know, test one, test two, assignment three, assignment four, whatever, you select those. And then as you see in the flow sh chart, we really want to do a date picker where you could do a smart date adjustment, but we realize that is really, that is really biting off more than we can chew if we're ever gonna get this thing done. So, um, so the date picker will be like phase two. Um, so then um, instructional designers often need to have a master course where they can control the resources and make changes in one spot and have them link out to multiple sites. So the next question you're asked in the wizard is whether you want to copy those resources or whether you want to link to wherever you got them from. And then there's what happens behind the scenes. And then we wanted to find out whether people want to publish items or just do draft items. And so you can say, yeah, I want to publish the assignments and they're published, or I want them as drafts because I need to change them after the fact. And you're asked the same question about tests and quizzes. 
you're asked whether you want gradebook columns, you're asked whether you want to do it to forums, published or drafts. And um, so that's the big picture idea. We realize the devil is in the details, but I'm making this presentation to find out whether any of you want to jump in with us and share resources, either mocking up screens or um, doing QA on it once it gets out or um, helping us design how it all works. Uh, Miguel's on the call today and I'm really grateful for him because um, Josh, uh, we asked him if he would come up with an estimate from a developer's point of view of you know, how big a job is this really? Is this like 100 hours or 500 hours? And we also want to communicate it out to the community, not just for resources, uh, money too, and help, but because we don't want this to, um, like there may be other uh, efforts going on at the same time that this would um, influence or need to have coordination with. Uh, we know that um, there were some ideas of redesigning the uh, course, in, uh, the site info um, screen and its choices. And there was one other effort that this might also um, need coordination with. With that, I'm going to stop and um, see if you have any feedback. Hey, Laura, this is Tricia. And, um... I'm curious to know what kind of, um, or maybe you don't know, but uh, what kind of timeline are you hoping for here? Yeah, we won't really know until we get an estimate from Miguel. And oh. um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, right? He's right. He's estimating the hours it would take to do something oh, okay. like this. I got gotcha. you. I got and then you. he's probably estimating for one developer, but um, if there were concurrent development uh, goals that could be done, perhaps we could shorten the timeline by having more than one developer work on it. So for, yeah. for what it's worth, he does have four people on his team. So uh, he's been known to have multiple developers work on a project simultaneously. You know, I mean, my for, for me, a lot of it comes back to how quickly can we allocate resources? You know, I mean, as I think about these projects, I think, um, you know, what do we want to accomplish? Um, how do we define what we want to accomplish? What would it cost to accomplish what we want to accomplish? And then how you know can we allocate the resources to do that? Um, and in what right. time frame? You know, it would be it'd be neat to be able to do some of this before the September code freeze. Um, but a lot of that involves coming to agreement on the pieces of it and, and finding institutions to put forth resources to actually get it done. Is there a um a group already formed who, um, a project group that people can join if they're interested in participating? Absolutely. How would they, uh, how would they go? Josh. There is, I need, so it's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a bit of an ad hoc group. Let me look for the last email uh, to make sure that I have everyone. So a few of the folks are on this call. So if you are on this call and, have been involved in these discussions, maybe you can uh, you know, make yourself known in some way. I see Charles Bristow. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you're already involved, you might do a plus one in the chat to um, let us know. And otherwise, if there is a mailing list or something that you guys are using to for communications, and if you have any meetings scheduled, that might be something worthwhile to share out to the community. One thing so that, that we can do, um, since it's kind of moved beyond the um, the long site client group, if if you're interested in putting it in farm, um, just some you know general information on you know how to get involved, who to contact, when to meet, that sort of thing. We can make an area for the for this yeah. project under farm. Well, that's a uh, that's a good reminder that I've already done that. Um, I did not put contact information in there, but this effort is in the seeds section of Farm, and there's also a roll up Jira um, that's waiting for us to add Jiras for this individual thing. And I, I think those will come from um, they'll come from the developers. But uh, I also wanted to look at current issues that are already um, you know part of the scope of this. So I think the roll-up JIRA does have a couple 
a couple JIRAs already linked to it. But yeah, communication, how to, maybe we should um, create a Slack group for it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, it, it's it's interesting because, you know, on the one hand, I think that, you know, we need more, you know, more input from this group. And I think the farm, you know, making the farm connection makes a lot of sense. There are also some some clients of ours, members of the community who aren't all that active in these community groups who have been involved in these conversations and might be willing to put forth resources. So I'm trying to I'm trying to balance those two pieces of it. You know, yeah. obviously, the, you know, the, the pitch is those of you who are not in, who haven't been involved in the community come get involved. But they have heard that pitch before and there's something holding them back. So I'm trying to I'm trying to find a way to, you know, bring some some additional players to the table that you know might not have come to the table in the past. Well, and I think um, one example of someone who's jumped in just recently is um, Sean Platt from Roger Williams University. So thanks for being on this call, Sean. Um, I know you're a long site client and I've seen you in those groups, but uh, welcome to the broader community. Sean doesn't I, have a microphone right now, but he could write in the, in the chat. Yeah, welcome, Sean. Welcome. Um, yeah, so if there's a link that we could put into mm -hmm. Etherpad to capture, you know, for folks, or just send it out to the group to, I mean, I, we've got the links to the charter, the requirements, and the flow chart. Um, and once a Slack group is created, I guess, just alert folks so that they can join that too and be a part of it yeah and um part of the vision of this is um this this is like a game changer for sakai as an lms especially if we can crack the date picker nut yeah that's that would be huge huge well thank you laura and josh and everybody um who's working on this and looking at this and I hope we can um, do some coordination with uh, the site builder project which um, folks at UVA here are working on as well because I think there's definitely some overlap and I know we're we're going to be talking about that more so, in other meetings so this is exciting for those who are interested I'm happy to serve as a point of contact so if you walk off and say oh I've got a question feel free to drop me an email and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you connected in the right place oh perfect thanks Josh uh, any other announcements well one other I'd like to just mention something real quick about that pro about this project um, a lot of this touches site manage right which is um, one of those tools that uh, also needs a lot of cleanup um, so um, the fact that you know, you'd be going in and, and um, you know, making a lot of changes to this tool um, might make for a moment to do some cleanup in there. So yeah. <clears throat> it probably it probably would make sense because we wouldn't want to continue to perpetuate bad practices that um, that site manage has a lot of. Mm, so, good call. Good call, Earl. I know. Um, on the dev channel, uh, Miguel has also led the charge on the um, JSF cleanup on the chat tool. So, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so this is a. Yeah. I know it's kind yeah. of intertwined. I don't want to like you know mix uh, colors here, but um, there, <laughs> there's a there there's a moment where you know um, you know anytime you're going to go in and make some significant changes. Um, you know, which which this project would, right? I mean, it's pretty clear. Um, I'm hoping for a, a rewrite of site <laughs> No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advocate something like that, right? Um, that because that's you know that's really really large, right? And this is not. Yeah. This is that's a much larger scope, but it doesn't mean that we can't do get things going on the right track there, you know, or at least start to. Right, of course. because the worst thing we could do, like I said, is just is just perpetuate the bad practice. Right, we can at yeah, least, yeah. with respect to this project, you know, form, you know, get things on a better footing. Thank you, Will. Yeah, thank you. Any other announcements? 
I think I, I have one. one. I have one. Who is this? This is Laura Sierra. Oh, Laura, hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Good. So for those of you who don't know, Laura Geckler and I are on opposite sides of the same room. So um, we'll be, it might come to fisticuffs to see whose project gets moved forward the most quickly since we only have a limited pool of developers. But um, I wanted to give everyone an update on the gradebook changes that we've been talking about. Uh, for those of you who were at the conference, maybe you missed this, but Tuesday afternoon, we kind of had a quick meeting of everybody who's interested in making additional changes to Gradebook NG, um, most of them to bring them up to um, meet some of the stuff that we were able to do in Gradebook 2. And I've posted a link here to the Google spreadsheet. Steve Swinsberg was kind enough to go through um, the JIRAs that are out in the community to look at how many votes some of these issues got. He put together a filter, Josh put together this Google sheet, and this illustrates really nicely uh, which of those JIRAs, which of those features or enhancements the community feels are the most valuable or most important to get into Gradebook NG, um, I believe for, for 19, right, for Sakai 19. There's a lot of other things that are in the community that have already been fixed. Um, some of them are available in 12. I don't know, three. Some of them will still have to wait for 19 to come out. But um, the stuff at the top of the list here are still open JIRAs and as the votes are showing, they're pretty important for people to um, to want to get into their to get into Sakai pretty soon. So let's see if you're able to open that. Hopefully, everybody can see the doc. Looks like everybody's in there. Um, I just want to give you that update. Now, um, the voting happened last week. Thank you to everybody who did that. Um, as I said, now Matt Jones and Earl and Steve Swinsberg. Um, we'll be taking a little bit of time to look at this to try to decide, you know, what we can, what kind of time this might take. Um, Matt suggested that it might be kind of a chicken and an egg sort of thing where um, it might be kind of hard to make these estimates right away. I don't know, Matt, you want to comment on that at all? Or Earl, you want to jump in? I don't know what, how long the next phase will take, you know, till we can figure yeah. out the timeline. Yeah. And so I wanted to mention that I went and voted on the Google Doc, and then I forgot to go into the JIRAs until later. Uh, I did remember to do it, to vote there as well, and I'm just wondering if others failed to vote in JIRA for some of these. So I'm just, just mentioning it in sure. case you, you forgot, you could go in and do it now. Yeah, because we could always run that filter again. I think this filter was done on Sunday night, Monday time. So um, it would have captured just about everything from last week. But. Yeah. I so just so you know, we're in phase two. Yeah. Yeah. And I just mentioned that because I know I forgot to go to the JIRAs and vote there as well. Hey, Elsie, you want to you want to address the question in the chat? Um, I, yeah, I think some of this is coming from Gradebook Classic as well, although without opening some of these JIRAs, I'm not sure which ones, but I know some people had said there were some features in Gradebook Classic that hadn't made it over yet either. Most of them will be from Gradebook 2 because it seemed to be a lot more feature rich. But yes, there are some Gradebook Classic things identified here as well. So, and Jennifer, there, if you go to the JIRAs, if you're logged into JIRA, you will see on individual JIRAs a um, vote link um, kind of in the right margin. Answer see if I can, let me see if I can find, yeah, here it is. Here's Steve's filter. Let me see if I can copy that in here. Josh, I think just paste Oh, there it is. It yep, that's it. That's the Jira Thanks, filter. Josh. So you can go there and uh, upvote things that you care about if you haven't already. All right, that's it for me. Awesome. Can we uh, can we can we set a deadline for the for the next round of voting? Because it'd be nice to be able to close this and then be able to have some priorities to for the developers to estimate. The challenge yeah. was with 41 issues, it would take so much time to estimate that it's not really even worth it until we have a sense of priority. Right. 
and say Friday? I, yeah, I, I could send out another reminder to everybody and make sure they get through to the, the JIRAs and make their votes there and end it on Friday and say that's it. You know, if you haven't voted by Friday, you're just not passionate enough about the grade book. <laughs> huh. <laughs> All right. Who's not that's passionate that. about the grade book? I can't imagine who that would be. And then we're going to have a voting contest between which one you're more passionate about, the import from site, yay, or the grade book. I think we should do an arm wrestling contest. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> or maybe if we have a groundswell of institutional support, we could divide and conquer. And, and, uh, oh, know, we're gonna... there you go. Yes, let's do them both. Josh with the win. Love it. Wilma, I saw an email from you this morning. Do you want Yeah, to the 12.2 was released yesterday. I wasn't able to get this announcement in. There was just this flurry of announcements at the beginning. But 12.2 was released. Um, and so it's out there and available for folks. And 12.3, um, we're hoping, um, you know, later, like September-ish um, would, would come out. So that's kind of the plan now, but 12.2 um, awesome. was just released with, with 105 uh, fixes, so. Excellent. So we are swiftly running out of time, uh, eating into our presenter time. And so what I'm gonna do is postpone the JIRA review. Tiffany um, asked to take a look at one. And if we have time at the end, we'll do that, Tiffany. Um, but I. I don't want to um, take away from our main topic today. So I'm gonna turn it over to our presenters, um, Miguel, Wilma, Earl, and Josh to talk about the Sakai rubric project. And um, Wilma, do you want the um, presenter privileges or? Um, yeah, I can share my screen. I don't know, we didn't kind of plan who was gonna do that. <laughs> screen share but I do have some stuff I can show you so um so I'll take the screen share and then if you guys want me to pull something up just let me know thank you okay we'll take it away all right so while I do that if somebody else could like give a quick intro just because it'll take me a minute to get it back up again so I'll, uh, I'll give you guys uh, the, the short contextual history of rubrics. <clears throat> you know, a lot of it is, is before my time in the community, but uh, when, I, when I got here, there was, which is nearly a year ago at this point, there was, um, um, there was a, a tool that Unicon had built that uh, you know, hadn't quite made it into Sakai. So the, the, the job in front of us was to integrate the Unicon tool and uh, you know, do the integrations in multiple areas of Sakai. So we, uh, we organized a bit and uh, the upshot was that uh, Miguel and his team working with Earl ended up uh, integrating the Unicon tool, doing some, uh, some background work to make that work and also doing integrations in forums, gradebook, uh, assignments and Samago, there we go, in addition to the, uh, the rubrics tool itself. So what's been merged into master at this point is that piece of work so there's also a, a, a big difference between the integration of the unicon tool as it existed and the vision that people have for rubrics so that gap is uh, addressed in a large number of jiras that have been put together both uh, by earl and miguel and wilma in the course of the development and, uh, and also by Wilma in the course of her testing uh, with several of you folks and lots of others of rubrics as it exists currently. So, you know, from my perspective, the thing to do is to figure out um, what would be, what enhancements would be most important to make and most feasible to make. We, you know, what is the biggest bang for buck between now and the code freeze so that we can get the best possible version of rubrics into 19 when it releases? So I'm, I'm interested to see um, just if you could kind of let me know in the chat, um, how many of you have already seen rubrics? Because I don't want to spend a lot of time doing a demo if people have already kind of seen it. But if you haven't seen it and are, are just itching to, I can do a quick um, overview. So I see a couple of people say they've seen it. A couple of people want to see it. <laughs> and it's now on nightlies. So. Yeah, so you can look at it on there. I'll just do a very very brief. Um, so it's its own tool. And um, when you go in here, you can add 
rubrics here. There's local rubrics which are tied to the site and shared rubrics which are shared um, among the entire system. Um, so when you add a rubric, you've got places here to um, to you know identify criteria. You can have different levels. You can assign point values to the various levels. Um, and then once you have those rubrics created, you can attach them to items. Like these all have rubrics attached because they've got the little icon in there. So when you go into um, the settings for an assignment, for example, you can choose from the local rubrics in that particular site um, to attach a particular one to that assignment. And um, you can preview them from here to see if that's the one you want and then um, post it. And so when you go into grade, let me go into grade one real quick. Um, it's a clickable rubric. So if I go in, I'm going to go into one that this was from the UX testing. Um, it's already been graded, but we'll just kind of regrade it. So it's in a tab behind the student's submission and you can go in and click to select any of these levels and it will total the point values for you and plug that number into the grade. Um, so that's kind of where that goes. And it, it works similarly in, in uh, tests and quizzes. It's in like another tab um, and you can also attach them to forum topics um, at the topic level. You would attach it in topic settings. Um, let me just scroll down here, grading rubric, um, similar idea, uh, and then you can also do them in um, the gradebook to an individual gradebook item that's been manually added, and in tests and quizzes, you can actually do them on individual questions. So um, you can attach it to a short answer or essay question, for example. Um, so that's kind of the different integration points currently. And, uh, and I did um, some testing right before Open Imperio with um, several folks. And I'm, I'm happy to go through the results of that testing if you guys are interested in, in seeing what I came up with. I also made a whole slew of JIRAs yesterday. <laughs> so it's like 20 something odd JIRAs um, that you can go in and vote for since we're all you know voting for stuff now. But, but I'll pause um, just to kind of look at the chat and see if there's any burning issues or if Earl or Miguel or anybody want to jump in and, and address anything before I go into the results. Yeah, I, get, I could like just quickly say that, you know, <clears throat> you know, rubrics were given to us, you know, to the community back in, <clears throat> it's been about a year and four months or something like that, maybe close to a year and a half ago. And, um, uh, you know, we finally, um, you know, it, it was never integrated in the way that any other Sakai tool was integrated. And um, um, I can happily share that uh that the the delay and the uh the pro the state that we're at now is where everything is completely integrated with sakai and that um as if it was developed f for sakai from the beginning and so that's that's really where we wanted to get to with it and uh we're finally there and so um and now it's just a matter of as you know with any tool any new tool there might be a few issues here and there that just need to be addressed and cleaned up, um, you know, before it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, before it's ready for prime time. So that's kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, that's kind of our uh, focus at this point <clears throat> is to, uh, you know, address those, uh, the, the, the burning issues that come up. And it's on the night lease, finally. So. Yep. Hey. <clears throat> so anybody else? before I go into the, the JIRAs? Yes, it is going into 19. It's going to be awesome. Sweet. Yay. <laughs> All right, so this is my summary, and I'll paste the link in here if anybody wants to just go to the document. It should be open for anybody.
anybody to view. Um, so basically, I had 10 um, UX test participants, and they were from a variety of institutions, a variety of roles. Um, the objective was just to kind of go through the interface and see where you know people had trouble, um, things that could maybe be um, <clears throat> corrected um, prior to you know the big reveal so um, overall people really liked it uh, they they loved the you know the ability to attach a rubric the ability to just click on it and have it score um, so that was something that a lot of folks have been asking for for a long time they were excited about it um, there were a few little you know rough patches in um, some of the rubric sharing options and um, some aspects of the grading or viewing features feedback. So what I did was I grouped all of those um, into some recommendations and I've got them listed here. I grouped them into high, medium, and low based on either the severity of the issue, like if it's something that there's an easy workaround or, or there's just no solution. Um, and the number of people that noticed it, like if everybody, every single one of the testers picked up on on a particular item as an issue, then that um, led it to be a higher priority. So I created Jira's for all of these, except for a few um, issues that I wanted to do some additional QA testing once it went on to nightly, but. Um, so all of these have um, Jira's, which I will pull up. And I haven't added images yet just because I didn't have time, but I am going to be going back and adding some screenshots. Um, so I'll just run through the list, but feel free to, um, to go to any of these and vote for them or add additional detail if you like. Um, so high priority items, rubrics really need to copy with the course. Currently, they don't. Um, they don't copy with the course. They don't maintain those item associations. So it's kind of a lot of work to go in there and reattach everything, um, even if you share them all and then copy them all and then reattach. It's it's a whole, whole lot of clicks. Um, so that would really be a barrier for a lot of folks to, to use them from term to term. Um, another issue was that they need to um, scale or at least warn the user if there's a point, points mismatch. Um, currently, you can attach a rubric to an item that's worth a different value, and the rubric is only worth like 20 and the assignment's worth 100 and you get this mismatch. So um, there needs to be some, either a warning to make the user fix it at the point that they attach the rubric or some method of scaling the points so that they don't run into that issue. Um, there's an option in there called fine tune points, which nobody knew what it did. <laughs> and um, it just, I think, could be fixed with a little relabeling. So I, I suggested the new label is allow individual student score adjustments, because that's kind of what it does. A uh, little wordy, but I thought a better descriptor. Um, uh, currently, there's no way for students to see their graded rubric feedback in forums. So you can use, you can attach a, a rubric, you can grade it, but students don't see any of that feedback. Um, so there really needs to be a way for, for students to view that. Uh, most people expected that to be visible either in the forum post or in the gradebook, one of the two places, and currently it's not in either. Um, Another issue was a way to search or filter the list of rubrics. As you saw, and let me just go, and this is a small number of rubrics, relatively speaking. These are um, just the rubrics for this one site. And the shared rubrics are everybody in the system. So you can imagine when people start adding um, lots of rubrics or copying over, you know, 10 per class, you're going to end up with a massive list here. It, it gets to be kind of difficult to find the one that you're looking for. And also you can have uh, rubrics coming from different courses with the same name, which makes it a little more confusing. Um, on top of that. So um, so there needs to be a way to, to either search or identify, filter for your own rubrics or, or something in there. Um, let's see. Uh, the student's name needs to appear at the top of the pop-up window. I didn't show you that when I went into gradebook, but let me go over here. And like when I grade an item for a student, um, oh, Oh, no, that's Trisha's rubric. I got confused for a second because I saw a name. Um, this is the name of the rubric. <laughs> but um, the student's name doesn't appear anywhere. Um, 
so it's very easy for the instructor to kind of forget you know which cell they clicked in or maybe even inadvertently click on the wrong student so there needs to be a name there so they can kind of keep track um let's see and we need some additional qa now that it's on nightly and we can do more there that i know that um several of the participants experienced lag issues or cache issues um the drag and drop was a little quirky uh, and a couple of people using IE had some menus that just didn't work at all. So we need to do a little more testing there now that it's um, merged and out there. Um, so some of the medium level items, uh, people were kind of um, confused by the number of criteria. So they prefer to have kind of just one default and be able to customize it. Um, the sharing and unsharing of items could be a little more intuitive. Um, so that was another thing that uh, that came out of the testing. Um, and users wanted control over the sharing. So they wanted to be able to share it with certain people or certain courses. Um, so they wanted more control over the sharing. Kind of like in Google, you can choose you know, who to share things with. Um, and ideally, people wanted the rubric feedback to be available for all items. Currently, like if you go to the grade book um, and pull up a student, you'll see this one. And this is another thing that came out. This icon just needs to be updated. But um, the uh, the rubric feedback for this item, because it's a, a grade book item, shows up here. But none of the other items that have rubrics attached, um, you can't really tell that, A, they have a rubric attached to them or B, get to the rubric feedback from here. And since a lot of times um, students are very sort of in tunnel vision, they go straight to the grade book for their feedback, um, it would be nice to be able to include a link or something to be able to pull that information here as well. Um, let's see, I'm trying to go through these quickly because there's a long list. So. Um, Easier bulk grading from the forums space. Um, it's very convoluted if you tend to go to the bulk grading screen. If you just view the post and grade it from there, it works pretty well, but the other workflow is is not, not happy. Um, and the uh, the questions, if you're one of those that likes to grade like all of one question at a time to see all the submissions for a particular question, there's no way to get to the rubric from there. Um, you have to go into an individual student submission to see it. Um, so that would kind of disrupt that workflow if people use that option for grading um, short answer essay questions. Um, and then there was just a, a handful of low uh, priority items. Um, right now you can have multiple edit menus open at the same time, which gets a little confusing. Um, people really wanted a, a message, you know, confirming that something had been copied or shared or deleted so they knew when it was complete. Uh, a lot of times they would share something and not know if it had been shared and then scroll up and down a bunch of times looking for it. Um, local rubrics should be renamed to site rubrics. I saw that one in the chat. Um, the rubric icon, I already mentioned that, needs to be changed to match the other ones. Um, the location of the rubric icon should be consistent across tools. Uh, a couple of people noticed that it was in a different spot. It was on the left um, in, uh, in forums, but it was on the right in all the other tools. Um, and then also the location of the rubric on the screen, like when you go into grade, it was in a slightly different spot in each of the tools. So more consistency there would be ideal. Um, and then a lot of people seem to like the idea of having when they clicked in the cell in the grade book to have that open the rubric as opposed to having a drop down menu. Right now, if you just click in the cell, it's just like a normal thing. Nothing seems to happen and you can manually put in a score um, and you might not even realize that, you know, that there's a rubric there. Um, you have to go to this drop down menu and then select it. So um, some people said that they would rather it either when you click in the cell, the rubric come up or um, maybe have an icon of a rubric in the cell and you click on the icon to pull up the rubric. Um, let's see. And then also um, just another low priority item is that right now rubrics are available for all question types but they really are only applicable for like um, things that are not auto graded so short answer essay or file upload um, are really the only ones that people could come up with an easy use case for 
actually using a rubric. So um, it may not be necessary in the settings for the other question types. So, um, so that was the feedback gathered um, from the testing, and I'm grateful to all the folks that participated. Um, I do have additional, you know, uh, recordings and observation sheets and all that, but I, I've kind of summarized it into to this um, to distill it down a bit. So, if anybody has any questions or wants to see anything specific, I'm happy to do that. This is great. We're excited. There's a lot of um, conversation going on in the chat. Um, some questions around the forums and the forums uh, modernization project and how that ties into the grading um, with rubrics and otherwise. Um, Charles Bristow suggested an audio response um, rubricizing that. Rubricizing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's there. I'm sure there are lots of um, enhancements that could be added to this, but this is a great list to start with. Really, really good. How many people participated in the UX testing? There were oh, ten, you, you have, participants. Right ten, ten yep. participants. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't uh, name them, but if you're here and you want to, you know, step oh, up, feel free. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I did. <laughs> yeah, Trisha did. Trisha was one of okay. them. I'd be kind of curious to hear people's immediate reactions. I mean, so we can we, we can and should vote on Jira's uh, with with some thought. But I'm kind of curious, you know, where people think the priorities might lie on first blush. Uh, this is Tiffany. Um, I know it hasn't been mentioned, but uh, there were a number of accessibility issues with rubrics when I took a look at it, and I'm concerned that, uh, as is, they could significantly lower our accessibility um, of Sakai. Uh, so I think it would be good to have those looked at um, before we <laughs> decrease our score um, and, you know, to, to improve it for uh, you know, users. Yeah, I don't know if any accessibility testing has been done on it yet. Typically. Yeah, this but, testing just focused in on usability, not accessibility. Yeah. So um, it definitely needs some additional accessibility testing now that it's on nightly. Um, and and I'm not experienced enough testing for accessibility issues to catch them. So um, we definitely need some folks with a little bit more uh, expertise in that arena. Yeah, I mean, accessibility is part of usability, right? I mean, they sort of go hand in hand. So <laughs> there is there well, is some of that. Yes, yes yeah. and no. They're definitely related. There's a lot right. of overlap, but they are two different things if you're testing yeah. with just yeah. sighted users. Yeah, for but sure. Tiffany, I don't know if you want to organize some testing for accessibility of this tool with folks. That would be really great if you could help with that. I don't know if you've... Yeah willing to do that, but that would be super. Hey, uh, Tiffany, I have a thought, and I'm totally speaking out of school here, but to the extent that we've been thinking about organizing uh, ac accessibility testing training for interested members of the community, it might be that rubrics would be a good uh, proving ground for those folks. You know, yeah, that's, that's true. Um, we do have some JIRAs that I know need to be tested for 12, um, and we just, uh, Ron and uh, I believe it's Mike from uh, Brock University are uh, have agreed to start up an accessibility testing team uh, or accessibility QA, you know, group uh, subgroup of QA. Um, so we're discussing uh, getting that started, and this would be a uh, a great yeah. Ron from uh, Illinois State and uh, Mike from Brock. Um, this would be a great yeah. uh, tool to get them started uh, with after they've done the uh, the 12 testing. Yeah, I think actually rubrics is a really good um, place to kind of make sort of a showcase of how things should be done. Um, so, you know, we've done some mm -hmm. testing here for UX. Um, we need to get the accessibility folks on it early. Um, you know, we need to, um, I know Earl has done a lot to make sure that it was integrated correctly and, and 
in the on the back end um, so there's a lot of things that we can do right here to serve as kind of a model for other tools that are added later yeah that's great that would be great awesome well tiffany um thank you for organizing that with with those folks that would be that would be super sometime between now and september i guess right because um is that the freeze code freeze although i, I find myself wondering you know whether uh, that might be the, the freeze for new features and the bugs might be addressable afterwards. Oh, true. Um, that is true. Yeah, usually yeah. bugs are, are right up until. Yeah. Awesome. This is super exciting, folks. You guys have done a lot of great work. I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm not sure if we missed anybody else's um, questions or comments. Um, if so, could you repeat them in the chat or come on the mic? Laura's asking Josh a question on the list of fixes needed. I would say items one, two, and six in the high priority list are probably the most critical to make rubrics workable for most faculty. Thanks for that, Laura. That's helpful. Yeah, and as Josh mentioned, we're, we're hoping to get some of these um, issues addressed, you know, before code, code freeze. So if there's certain ones in this list that you want to vote up, that'll definitely give us a better idea of which ones to do first. And also, if there's items that aren't on this list, um, you know, feel free to add them. Now that it's on nightly, anybody can add um, a JIRA and, and, you know, look at it. So um, feel free yeah, to add additional not, ones. There is a rubrics yeah. component in JIRA now, so you can find oh, it there. So you can just look it up by that component in JIRA mm -hmm. and then vote. Okay, that sounds great. Let's see, if somebody has a moment to go and create a filter for it and share that in the chat, that would be super helpful. That way it's just a link that people can get to it quickly. All right, so it's 1048, we have 12 minutes. So I think we have time, Tiffany, for the JIRA that you were interested in discussing. And let's see, I'm gonna paste that into the chat. It's in the etherpad, but I'll also paste it here. So it's SAC 32598, when creating groups, have filters to display only students from specific section roster and students not yet assigned to an existing group. So, yes, so you want yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, this was a, a JIRA that Tonko brought up uh, at Open Aperio, and uh, I thought it was a great idea. Um, he has some large sites, uh, large classes where there are multiple sections, uh, and he wants to create groups uh, out of these discussion sections. So let's say you have a, you know, a lecture class, huge lecture class, and you've got like five or six uh, discussion sections, and you want each discussion section to have their own uh, groups for say forum discussions or something, um, or assignments or whatever. Uh, this, he wants a filter to allow you to see only students uh, from a specific section uh, when you are creating the groups, and um, also to see only students who are within that section who haven't already been added to a group. So it can be confusing if you have a lot of students and you want to add some uh, to groups or a lot of site members. It could be in a project site too. Um, and you don't remember who, uh, yeah, a sort of sub filter uh, Dave um, mentioned in the chat. Um, you don't remember who has already been added to a group. You don't want to put the same person in two groups. Um, this would allow you to manually create groups uh, without duplication of uh, users across them. Um, and it seems to me like this wouldn't be too terribly hard to create because we already have the filtering um, like this in, in Gradebook. Uh, I did a mock-up of, uh, of the um, suggested design. Of course, in the mock-up, I show the other, um, you know, the, the normal group list, but um, it's in the JIRA. If you can click on that, that uh, image to see it. Um, 
Oh, so you've added a view drop down menu and an unassigned student. Right. Right. Or unassigned you. students are all students. Okay, so that's what shows up in that drop down. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So and it would be unassigned but students. All students. all students in that in that group or section that you've selected. Is that right? Correct. So the yeah. first view menu would be either the whole site or a group or section. And then the second menu would be unassigned. Well, actually, it shouldn't be unassigned students. It should be unassigned members because you could have a role uh, of a teaching assistant or instructor that you want to add. Um, mm -hmm. And so then the site member list uh, would show the roles, you know, role, instructor, student, whatever. Um, and then those members of that uh, roster or uh, section. If the view were changed to a roster or section. And the ability to search for a student name, uh, I think, was the other uh, component of that to mm -hmm. uh, find users in a very large site. Um. It looks like Miguel has pasted in another JIRA. Let's see if that is tied to this one. Site, site info group management. So there is a feature request. It was resolved. Feature allows instructors to filter the member list by the selected group sections. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's already. So, so that's coming in 19. Great. It looks like. I'm not sure it's the same, so you might want to take a look at it. Thanks for that, Miguel. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite the same, but yeah, very similar. Is this here? It's a, but the meeting. You're breaking, you're breaking up, Miguel. Unfortunately, you're breaking up, but I couldn't catch what you said. Yeah. So if you want to, if you can, uh, Type it into the chat, but um, that's helpful to have that it's a similar feature, but it's incomplete. Oh, okay, so maybe there's something to add to that, but they should definitely be linked, I would think. As Jira's. And yeah, thanks for bringing this up. This is this could yeah. be a nice enhancement, Tiffany. Um, Laura, Sierra, Laura Gexler, rather, going back to the announcement on the um, site duplication and the date stuff is letting us know that we can vote on copying content issues in the seed section of FARM. So um, if you're interested in that work, then go vote for it. Thanks, Laura. Look for the tulip image. That's helpful. <laughs> Good. And reach out to Josh if you want to participate or give feedback in any way for now, I guess. That link didn't work for the farm, says Dave. Yeah, so, I've. Oh, it's no S. No. All right. Uh, let's see. I think we are ready to talk about upcoming meeting topics because after today we don't have anything scheduled and we're going to skip um, July 4th for obvious reasons, at least for those of us in the U.S. that's a major holiday, so we are not going to have a meeting on the 4th of July. But the next meeting date is um, the 18th of July, and that's the next open date, and uh, the first and third Wednesday in August are also open, so we're looking for present presenters, topics, and I'll uh, certainly be reaching out to some of the folks from Open Aperio presentations, um, so if you ha saw something that you think uh, you would like to see again or have others in this um, call, to see, let me know and I can reach out to that person or if that person is you, um, please reach out to me or Matt Burgess or Wilma so we can get you scheduled. So um, look at those dates and, and let us know if you're available and what topic you want to present on. 
Does anybody have any other announcements or comments before we, yeah, we'll probably be stocking some of you. Yes, definitely, uh, for sure. A lot of good presentations at Open Aperio. Um, any last comments before we adjourn or questions or announcements? Okay, well, I wish you all a happy Wednesday and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much.